The Prime Minister has said your party will lead Nepal to anarchy. What's your response? You see, it is a very unbecoming comment uh, from the Prime Minister, which had not been able to carry the verdict of the people for five years. He landed his party in such an anarchic situation, and that because of the defections and abstinence of his MPs, we are facing this meet. So for a person who had not been able to keep his house in order, to brand our party to be a party, if it comes in power, it can't handle the situation and the country will land in anarchy. It is absolutely incorrect. But you do have still a very agitational style of politics. You've relied as much on rallies and demonstrations as on parliamentary politics. You see, uh, as regards uh, our parliamentary function and as regards the rallies and demonstrations, because of the very high-handed policy of the Prime Minister, his unreasonable attitude towards uh, the opposition, sometimes we have to be in the street and uh, involve ourselves in the rallies and distance. Otherwise, we are totally committed for extending this parliamentary system and uh, working according to the rules of the parliamentary democracy. So on that issue, we are totally committed. But our feeling is, our position is, Prime Minister always drives us in the street. That's why uh, sometimes, even if we don't like it, uh, we have to be in the street and state for our grievances and our uh, demands. How serious an issue is corruption? Cor as you say, as regards corruption is concerned, it has become a part of uh, uh, this system. From top to bottom, the ministers are corrupt, the Prime Minister is corrupt, his family is corrupt, and uh, even the niece of the Prime Minister has accepted in the parliament uh, that from uh, Prime Minister's personal secretariat to ordinary and uh, uh, different ministries, there is corruption. General uh, statement uh, is uh, from uh, Prime Minister's niece. And very recently, Prime Minister himself is involved in a big scandal. Uh, that case is in the Public Account Committee of the Parliament, in which his party is in the majority. Prime Minister had to go there to give a statement. Ministers were involved there, uh, secretaries and uh, general managers of the RNAC were involved in it. So this is one example. Besides that, you can, if you go and uh, uh, try to collect uh, examples, uh, you can find a lot of uh, incidents where corruption is uh, rampant. It seems to me that quite a lot of young people in Nepal are impatient for the economic <coughs> advantages they expected would accompany democracy, and that a lot of them are losing faith in democracy because they are still without jobs, without welfare. You see, as regards uh, hope of the people is concerned, I don't deny that people uh, might have expected very high. And I don't accuse this uh, government of the Nepali Congress for not doing things in a miraculous way. But then if they should start. They should let the people feel that something is being done. And uh, they should be able to take the people in confidence when they can't keep their uh, parliamentary MPs their party and others in confidence, and they don't uh, show any sign of improvement in the economic development, the people will be impatient. So to be actual and to be very balanced, uh, it will be correct to say uh, that people are impatient because of uh, no hope of change in the economic situation. You said that you will provide a job for at least one person in each household. How will you do that? You see, what we propose to do is uh, primarily uh, in our country what we need at present is basically land reform. If you reform the land and you allow the people uh, who till the land to own the land, that will also generate a lot of uh, opportunities, firstly. Secondly, uh, what we intend to do is we will allow uh, as a liberal economy market-oriented economy, and then we'll request uh, national investment, foreign investment uh, in joint ventures, as well as in total. Say if uh, any investors come from India or other country or uh, West also, we'll allow them to invest 
and do uh, work. So with this uh, concept, which we think is very pragmatic and practical also, uh, we'll be able to invite uh, investment from uh, different quarter and uh, uh, say by the uh, term uh, five years, we will be able to generate job uh, which will uh, satisfy our uh, unemployed people. Your party is called the Unified Marxist Leninist Party. Mm, yes. But what you've been saying sounds much more like a social democratic party. Let me tell you, you see, uh, we had uh, started our uh, political uh, life or political party system in this country uh, under Marxism. That is true. That is our philosophy. But then uh, we also always uh, struggle for democracy and uh, nationalism as well as the basic economic uh, needs of the people. So our whole orientation, although we carry the name, although we believe in that philosophy, but when we come down to our country, we are as good as a, a democrat. So would you say your party is more social democratic than Marxist? You see, uh, let us uh, not go in words, let us go in deeds. We still say that uh, Marxism is a philosophy which has to be interpreted according to the needs of the country. And what we feel is, what we are doing is inconsistent with uh, Marxism, as well as uh, it, uh, need, it meets the requirement of the uh, uh, present situation of the country. Uh, and concept is very pragmatic, and concept is very realistic. And uh, uh, we hope uh, we'll be more democratic uh, as the time grows. It looks almost certain that your party will have, a, again, less seats than the Nepali Congress after the election. But perhaps the difference will not be very great. Can you imagine any way that you would form an alliance with part of the Congress to be in government? You see, as far as the assessment of the situation is concerned, uh, I don't agree with, uh, with your statement. If uh, the elections are fair, if you can check the regime which, uh, which Mr. Goral is planning from top to bottom, we are uh, heading for majority in the party. And if you get a majority, uh, would, would you like to be prime minister? Naturally, not me, but the uh, any any person who, uh, that the party will decide, he will lead the government. And if it was you, would you be happy with that? Happy means you see, naturally, a person who had been all these years in the struggle and uh, uh, in politics, if he gets the opportunity of serving the country as the first servant of the nation, he will be happy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tell you, sir, when did you become a communist? I, be, I became a communist uh, in the prison in India. I had participated in 1942 Quit India movement. There I happened to meet some communist leaders of India, and I joined uh, the politi political classes which they were conducting there. So after that, I got convinced that Marxism is a suitable course for drown-trodden people, since then I am communist. And the classes were jail classes? Yes, in the jail, in the prison, Banaras District Jail and Banaras Central Jail. Were there any particular figures in the CPI who inspired you? Uh, the, the two persons, one is uh, Dange, uh, and then Sivdan Singh Chauhan is a literary critic of India. I don't know whether Dange is dead, and perhaps Sivdan Singh Chauhan is also dead. And there was Sipu Sindhrapa, these three persons, uh, with them I had some personal contact also. After that, uh, with almost all the top leaders of India's communist movement, I am quite well known to them. And did you have any links with members of the CPGB? No. How were relations with the CPI in those early years? You see, I became the member of the CPI. First, at that time in Nepal, there was no political freedom. And I worked in the, uh, India in the Eastern Movement, in the Labour Movement, and I acquired some experience of political experience. Then I came back to my country in 1947. Uh, since then, I'm in Nepali politics. And when was the Nepali party founded? It was in, in 1946. 
when the Nepali Communist Party was founded, uh, it was founded under the inspiration of CPI, undivided CPI. And at that time, I was in Rana's prison. I had led a struggle in labor area in Biratnagar. I was, at that time, BP Kerala was also involved in that struggle. So uh, we were in the prison. And um, when I was in the prison, the Communist Party of Nepal was founded. It's strange because this, the, your party now is a very nationalist party, but you had to rely a lot in those early years a lot of, on the CPI. As I told you, uh, in Nepal there was no political freedom. Uh, in uh, uh, Nepal, almost all the political leaders and all the political parties had had some contacts uh, with India. The, uh, most of the political leaders in Nepal, they had some sort of... Uh, participation in India's freedom struggle. Uh, Nepali Congress had the alliance with the Cong uh, Indian National Congress. Uh, we, when we became left, we had an alliance with the CPI, undivided CPI. Uh, so, this is sort of geographical nearness and uh, democratic aspirations. Almost all the democratic-minded people had some sort of <coughs> contact with India. But 46 was the time of Telangana when the CPI was in a very militant phase and it was encouraging peasant uprisings. Did the new Nepali Communist Party try and organize peasant uprisings? You see, at that time, uh, we were a very weak party. Just uh, We had founded um, the party. Uh, at the time when the Telangana movement was being conducted, uh, we had had no uh, possibility and no chance of doing anything uh, in that light. Moreover, later on, uh, when there was change in the policy, when under the inspirations of Soviet Union, uh, when uh, India and Soviet Union had good relations, uh, and uh, because of some uh, strategic trouble, Telangana movement collapsed. They had to withdraw, they had to change the policies. Why is communism so strong in Nepal? As I told you, the, 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 uh, the history of the Communist Party of Nepal is uh, as old uh, as Nepali Congress. Our struggle for democracy, nationalism, and uh, people's livelihood, economic livelihood, is as strong, as old, as uh, grass-rooted than Nepali Congress. So on, on occasions, we are better than Nepali Congress. Nepali Congress always like to stay in India, have a very peaceful atmosphere and some relations with the ruling, after the in, uh, ruling party there. Whereas we decided to stay in prison, we decided to stay in Nepal, we decided to go underground, we decided to go and work as ordinary primary teachers in the villages. That's why we have root in the villages, where I don't count it on to have. As regards the youth is concerned, generally in our country the youth is uh, left-minded because, as I, as I told you, they want some change, economy, economic relations, economic policies, so that they will get job chances. So they are convinced that once the Communist Party comes in power, they will be able to give them job, create them an employment. So they are, we are popular with them. And we are popular in all, in all the circles because we are nationalist. vis-a-vis -vis India. We had never been a direct colony of any country. Uh, but then vis-a-vis -vis India, we are nationalist. We opposed all the unequal treaties which India inherited from the uh, British Empire. Uh, they are more empire-minded than the British were. You can ask. No concession to the ne Nepali sentiment. Never. I had been watching India's role in this country for the last 50 years. I am very sorry to comment, although I am uh, very friendly towards India. Still, I am very friendly for, towards India. I want. Uh, that uh, India and Nepal relations should be updated, should be cultivated on equal footings. But I uh, doubt whether India will reciprocate uh, this sovereign gesture. They don't allow us to trade with Pakistan. They don't allow us to trade with Bangladesh, just 20 kilometers. And we are running billions and billions of dips into India. And if this policy continues, not only economically, but politically as well, we will be an India-dependent nation, which I don't like.